this video today is uh, to take you through a project called Flappy Parrot. Um, it's a good little bit of fun um, using Scratch. Um, hopefully you've already signed into your Scratch account so that you're ready to go. Um, if not, can you just do that quickly now? Uh, maybe pause the video and then come back and press play when you're ready. So I'm just going to bring up my screen. Now, okay, so I'm signed into Scratch. Uh, you can see in the top corner that I've got my username. Um, that shows that I am actually signed in. Um, for this project, unlike uh, the previous projects that we've done recently, um, you can make it without having a starter project. So all we need to do is go to create. And I'm going to get rid of the cat and then I'm also going to change up in the top bit here I'm going to change the name to call it Flappy Parrot. There's only one here the end of Parrot. Okay so um, first thing that we need to do on our game is we're going to add a background to the game so click on the um, Add a stage at the bottom. So you click on the circle one. And for this one, I'm going to choose the blue sky background. And it comes up like that. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to um, add the pipes. So I'm going to hover over the cat at the bottom here, which is to choose a sprite. But I'm going to draw the, the pipes myself. I'm not, it's not something we're going to find. So I'm going to Rather than clicking, I'm just going to hover, bring my mouse up, go to the paintbrush and hit paint. Now, you'll see a blank page here. Um, what I'm going to do, firstly, is I'm going to change the colour. I want my pipes to be actually green. I can play around with the, the colours to make it kind of different shades and things. Um, and I don't want a particularly thick outline on these, just a fairly thin one. And the pipes are going to actually just be rectangles for now. So I need the rectangle tool selected. And then quite simply, all I need to do is draw a rectangle and make it as tall as I can. Okay. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my arrow tool, select a tool, click on this pipe, I'm going to do copy, and then I'm going to do paste. So I've got a second one, which I'm now going to just bring down and put at the bottom of the page, directly underneath the other one. So you can see that they're both underneath each other. Obviously you need to leave a gap in between, otherwise you're not going to have anything for the bird to actually fly through. Um, you can adjust these, so if you wanted to just bring this one a little bit lower maybe. And maybe bring this in a little bit. Uh, maybe it's just slightly to the left. You get the idea, you can adjust it. And then um, you, that also then adjusts the gap in between, so you can see how that gap's going to look. Um, if you want to add a, a gradient to the pipe to make them look more like pipes, um, we can do that. So um, if I click on one of the pipes, um, on the fill tool here, you can put a gradient. So you can do top to bottom gradient or left to right gradient. So I'm going to choose left. And then here you can see the colour it's going to. So I want to change this right hand colour here. I want to make that more of a yellow. go so you can see now that it, it shades across more as a more like a pipe I guess 
And let's do the same with that one. Okay, so we've got our pipes. Um, I am just going to go to the sprite and just change the name of it down here. So I've clicked on the sprite and where it, it, underneath the little picture, I've got the sprite there. I'm going to change it to say pipes. Just makes more sense to have it with the right, with a kind of sensible name. Okay, so we're now going to add another sprite, which is going to be our bird. So I'm just going to go back to code on that one. And um, I'm going to click on choose a sprite. Um, I want an animal and I'm looking for the parrot. So I'm going to go a bit down and it's alphabetical. So I'm going to click on parrot. And I'm going to call this Flappy. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to make him a lot smaller. You can see he's the wrong size in this moment. So at the start of the game, we're going to just make sure he's the right size. Let me just zoom into this, this block so we can see that better. So we're going to make sure he's the right size. Um, so in looks, we're going to change, set his size to 25%, which means it should be about a quarter of the size. So if I click the green flag now, you can see he get, becomes much smaller. You can adjust that as you want. So if you wanted him a little bit bigger, maybe you could make it 40% so that when the green flag is clicked, he's a bit bigger and so on. I'm going to stick with the 25%. You know? So you should end up being about that size. We also, when the game starts, we need to make sure that he starts in the right position. So we're going to set his, the coordinates that he starts at. So there's X and Y coordinates. So on X, we're going to put minus 50. We want him slightly to the left of the, the screen. Um, but you want him to start in the middle height. So the, on the Y, the up and down coordinate, zero is the middle of the screen. So we're going to do that. If I click on the green flag now, you can see he then moves to that starting position. Then, during the game, he should always be falling. So gravity will be essentially pulling him down the whole time. Um, we're not going to worry about him speeding up as he falls, uh, as gravity would for now. We're just going to make him just keep on falling. So because it's something that happens forever, and um, it happens all the time through the game, I can put a forever loop in there. And all we're going to do is say we're going to, when he's, whatever position he's at, we're going to change that Y coordinate so that we're taking some um, off it. So we're going to change not set, we're going to change the Y by, and because we're taking off it, we're going to change, change it by minus, and for now we're just going to say three. This is something you could adjust maybe to make him fall quicker or slower, depending on how you want your game. So the next, if he keeps on falling, what we need to do is have a method to actually make him kind of go up on the game. Now this is where there's two ways you could do this. You could um, have a spacebar press that makes him in fly, which is if you're using a computer is a really sensible way of doing it. Alternatively, you could have a button on the screen if you're using a tablet because on kind of phones and tablets you don't have um, the keyboard to use. Um, so let's for now I'm just going to go through um, using the space bar. Um, but basically, if it was a button, you'd set up a sprite and you'd say when the um, when this sprite is clicked and use broadcast to say pressed. And rather than having this when the space key is pressed, you would say when I receive the broadcast. OK, and that would be the, the, the difference. So for now, when the, the space keys pressed. We're going to do a repeat. I'm going to repeat it 10 times. I'm going to change, make him go up. So we're going to change Y by, let's do it at six for now. 
Okay, so let's just test that. So now if I, you can see if I press the space key, I can make him go up. When I let him fall, and then I can press the space key again and make him go back up again. Okay. Now, as you can see in that, as he was falling, it would make more sense that when you press the space key, his, his, um, his wings flap to signify that he's, he's flying. Um, so if I click on Flappy here, if I go to costumes, you can see that there's already two costumes to show his wings flapping. So that's already built in. What we need to do is actually make the program so that um, the wings actually flap as he's doing it. So to do that, we're going to add, we're going to just change this um, repeat part a little bit. We're going to have some wings down bits and some wings up bits. So I'm going to make this repeat five instead, and I'm going to add another repeat of five. So we've got five repeats for wings down, five repeats for wings up. Okay. And before each one, I'm going to switch the costume. And all I need is one of them to be parrot A and one of them to be parrot B. If you've changed the names on the costumes to say wings up and wings down or something like that, um, it's just making sure that, that that's the right name there. And then I need to add that change Y by six. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate that one and pop it in there. Okay. So now if I click my green flag, I should, as I press my space key, you can see him wings flapping as he as he flies. Now, what we haven't done yet is we haven't done anything with these pipes. We need to start making them move. I'm going to go back to my pipes and they start moving when the green flag is clicked. Or the, the actual program starts when the green flag is clicked. So I'm going to go to events. Okay, so when the green flag is clicked. Um, start thing. Um, you could do is you can set the size a bit like we did with the bird you can adjust this um so if, if they pipes look a bit bigger or smaller than you want you could make them smaller at the start of the game or you can make them much bigger i think that setting them bigger is better because when they move up and down um because they need to be off the screen it will it'll help um, so you don't get gaps at the bottom of the screen and things like that. Um, and at the very start of the game, they're going to start hidden, because uh, otherwise there's a danger if your bird's too close, it's going to fall straight away before you've had a chance to actually make your first press of the space key to get in the right place. And then all the way through the game, he's going to keep the pipes are going to move, create, keeping, keep creating clones of themselves and then appearing and so on. So the first thing we need to do, it keeps on happening, so it's a forever. It's gonna create a clone of itself. And then it's gonna wait before it does anything else. So it's gonna wait a few seconds. Then what we need to do is when each clone is created is um, generated, so that we're going to say when the clone is generated. So basically, when the pipes appear again, um, we're going to make sure first look that they're showing. They start on the right hand side of the screen, so we need to set the x coordinate of that. So we're going to well, we're going to set x and y actually. So we set x to 240, which is the right hand side of the screen. And we want to begin with, we're going to make it start so that they all start in the middle of the screen. So the, the, the gap should be kind of right in the middle of the screen. 
Um, we're then going to move them, so they're going to glide across the screen, and they're going to glide over the course of four seconds. So it takes four seconds for them to go from the right hand side of the screen to the left. Stay on that Y coordinate, and they're going to go to minus 240. So 240 is the right hand side of the screen, minus 240 is the left hand side of the screen. So now if I press my space key, you can see that it moves and they appear every two seconds moving across the screen. And then the final bit of code we need to add is back under control again at the very bottom. Once it gets over to this point, we need to delete the clone. Because as you can see in that demo then, they gathered and now when they get to the, the left hand side of the screen, they disappear and then a new one appears. So the next part we want to do is make, because at the moment the, the gaps are all, always in the same position. We want to make it so that the gap appears in a different position. Um, so it might be slightly higher or lower on the screen. And it's really easy to do. We're just going to, for this Y coordinate that's currently set to zero, we're going to make that random. And we're going to say it's random from minus 80 and up to 80, positive 80. When it glides, it needs to glide with this to the same height at the end. So what we're going to do is we're going to detect the Y position that's generated. So I'm going to go back to my motion blocks and towards the bottom, you can see this ver um, variable set to detect this to the sprite's positions. And one of them is the Y position. And that is going to go from there like that. So now I take the green flag and see there's a gap. But this one, next one's a little bit lower. It goes higher, back to lower again, and so on. So it's all a bit random, which is ideal for our game. So now that they're both moving and the bird falls, what we need to do is detect when the bird hits a pipe. So back to Flappy now. Um, we're going to add another block here that starts when the green flag is clicked. So all I'm going to do, I'm just going to move these a little bit about so that we can add some code and it doesn't get confused. So I've just moved those to one side and I've now got space underneath this when the green flag is clicked to, to add some more stuff. So the first thing I'm going to do is add just a wait until. in the middle of the control parts. So we're going to wait until, um, and I need an or. So what he's going to wait until is either he's touching a pipe or he's touching the edge of the screen. Because they're the two things that will make it all stop and the game over. So he hits a pipe or he hits the bottom of the screen or the, even the top of the screen, actually. Um, so. We're going to get, put some conditions in here, and the first condition is if he touches a pipe. So we go to sensing, touching is a sense, so we go to touching, and the thing that he needs to be touching is one of the pipes. So if he's touching a pipe, or the other alternative, if he's touching, and then one of the alternatives here is edge, and that means the edge of the screen. So basically, we click the green flag, and then it's going to wait. This part of the program is going to wait until he touches a pipe or the edge. And what we want to do is we want to either we want to um, maybe create a sound to go ah and, and die, um, and maybe he then says game over or something like that. So we're going to first of all start with the sound. So the start sound.
The start sound isn't quite there at the moment, so what we need to do is add it to the library. So we're going to go to, we're on Flappy here, so we're going to add, as you can see, there's a bird one, but we want a screech to be added in here. So if I go to sounds, I can then click the choose a sound from the bottom here, and I'm going to type in the search box here, uh, screech. And the, and you'll see as I start typing, it filters, and it's this one that's called Screech that I want there. And now, when I go back to my code, I can now choose Screech as an option. So the next thing I want him to do is I want him to actually say "Game Over" on the screen. So I'm putting a say in there and type "Game Over." In previous games, you've had game over screens and things like that that you've added at the end. Feel free if you want to, if you can remember how you've done it on previous games, make it flash to a different screen that says game over. Um, for now, I'm just gonna keep it simple and, and put that it says game over. And we also need to send a message to the rest of the game that the game is finished. So we're gonna use that broadcast block. It comes in with message one. I need to create a new message and I'm going to call this game over. And then the final bit is we're going to stop the program, but we're not going to stop everything. We're just going to stop the, the stuff that's on that's working for Flappy at the moment. Okay, so we'll um, leave the rest running for, for now. So now um, we're going to go back to the pipes. And what we're going to do is we're going to say when, hit, when the pipes hear the message, so when they receive the game over sign, and you can see I was clicked on the pipes when I receive game over, what I want to do is stop this, the other scripts in that file as well. So I'm going to go to stop and I change it to say other scripts in this sprite. So now let's test that. So I keep my green flag, I can fly, I can go through the gap, but if I hit a pipe, I get a screech and it put, says the message game over. All doing okay so far. So now that we've got that, what we want to do is we want to have some kind of way of showing whether you've done well or not in a game. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to um, add a score basically. So we're going to start off by creating a variable. So all the things that you record in the game and all the data We've come across this before, but we're going to, uh, they get stored in a, a variable. So we're going to create a variable. It's for the whole game, so it's not for a specific sprite. If it was a multiplayer game, you might want to make it for one sprite only, but we're going to have it for all of them, and we're going to call it score. And you should see in the top corner a thing that says score, and it should start when you've just added it as zero. So first thing I need to do is add a little bit to, to when the green flag is clicked. So at the start of the game, it doesn't matter where this is actually, whether it's on the pipes or whether it's on the flappy bird, it, it's just something at the start of a, a game when the green flag is clicked. So I'm gonna, choose, I'm gonna do it on the pipes because the other program I'm gonna do in a minute is to do with the pipes. Um, what I need to do is set, not change, we're gonna set and I'm going to change set the score to zero. So the score starts at zero. And then the bit that says when I start as a clone, oh, actually, no, we're going to do this as a separate block, actually, because otherwise the weight will get in the way of that one. So if I go back to um, the control ones, and when I start as a clone, I'm just going to add another little block here. 
I need to find another wait until. And what we're going to do is we're going to detect when the when flappy is further to the right of the screen than the pipe. So when the pipe has gone past, it's gone too far left, that X coordinate has gone, gone lower than the bird. So we, the bird is going to be greater than the pipe's position. So we need a greater than symbol. So remember, one is greater than two. So think where one and two would go if you're not sure um, on these positions. So one is greater than two. That's not right. Two is greater than one. So two greater than one. That would be the right way around. So you can use just simple numbers one and two to detect whether one is greater than two or one is less than two and which one is the right symbol. But anyway, it's the, it's the one that kind of points to the right. So we're going to take, get the X position of Flappy, um, which is actually in sensing because you're actually going to detect the X position of Flappy. So we're going to get, uh, where is it? Ah, there we go. So that halfway down, you've got something of something else. And it says, oh, we need to be flappy. And then I can choose the X position. Now, if you, if you don't change this bit first, if it's the stage, there's different options because a stage doesn't have an X position, whereas flappy, which is a sprite, does. OK, so we've got X position. And then what we're going to do is go back to motion and we're going to get the X position of the pipe, which we're on at the moment. Like that. And when that happens, we need to change the score. So we're going to add to the score, which is changing it. So I'm going to change, not set, change the score by one. And I'm going to make a sound to make you know that you've kind of achieved something. So we'll just use the pop sound. Hit the green flag to test this now. So let's see, so I'm flying. Let's see if we can get through this point. There we go, it's added one, added another one, and then I've died. That all looks pretty good to me. And that's where I'm gonna leave this instructions. So there are some challenges, so if you click, go to the um, the instructions that's on Teams. Um, there are some challenges uh, that you can add to the game um, if you want to, but I'd like um, for you to at least got to this point, but if you can challenge yourself and add something, um, it would be really great. So once I've done that, um, the last part of this now I've created my game is I need to click on the file and save now. And then I need to share this project. So I'm going to click on the orange. So where I changed the name before, next to it, you've got share, which is an orange button. So I click on that. And to make it really easy for, for me as a teacher, if you click on add to studio, and then what I want you to do is add it to the pupil file. So um, when you do yours, you'll see one called Flappy Parrot pupil files. Um, which you can add to. I'm just going to put mine for now because it's not created yet. I'm going to put it in the arch room just to show you. So click add, you get the tick, and then you hit OK. Easy as that.